Good evening, Mr. and Ms. Internet and all our ships at sea. It is Thursday. It is time once again for another Freeway Forum coming to you live and direct from the world famous 405 Freeway in beautiful sunny Southern California. My name is Atari and this is a freeform discussion hosted by me, but it is driven by you. Yes, you friends, it is your comments during this live broadcast that make it all possible. So please, we'll have a topic here, we'll discuss that topic, leave your comments down in the doobly do, and we will all have a good laugh and discuss them as this show goes along. So, it is uh, it's Thursday before Labor Day weekend, and that is the traditional start of uh, what has what has become the the most debaucherous <laughs> debaucherous uh, convention on the uh, the sci-fi and comic convention circuit. Uh, that is Atlanta's very own Dragon Con. Uh, now, being a native Atlantan myself, uh, I have spent many. Uh, many Labor Day weekends at the convention uh, down there, uh, downtown Atlanta, Peachtree Center, Peachtree Plaza. Uh, it's what, like five, five of the big, the big hotels downtown, and they're all interconnected. There's like a huge convention center like underneath all these uh, hotels. Uh, so it's Long Beach Comic Con. Dragon Con is not a huge convention, but it is big. It is uh, welcome to the Freeway Forum. Uh, be sure and uh, do us a solid and uh, click the click the little like uh, thumbs up there, and uh, and be sure to share this on your social medias. Uh, share this on your social medias so that uh, that we can get as many people in here as we can. There I am. Yes, it's it's a bad connection today, uh, for for reasons unknown. But uh, thank you for uh, for liking this one and be sure to share this. And, uh, we'll uh, we'll try and get some more people in here. I think uh, everybody might already be at the conventions that are this weekend. But uh, so uh, so I'm not sure, you know, as as far as raw size. Um, what the actual uh, what the actual sizes of the conventions are? Dragon Con is, of course, much smaller than uh, San Diego Comic Con. Um, it is probably smaller than Manhattan Comic Con, but I don't know that that is. I would have to research that. I would say that Dragon Con is on par as far as size goes. It's on par with uh, like WonderCon uh, here in Anaheim. Uh, it's a very large convention, but not the largest by any means. Um, uh, Long Beach Comic Con is a much, much smaller convention. Long Beach Comic Con is probably on par with, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, really, uh, Dragon Con is big. Dragon Con is quite big. Uh, I would, you know, th this is just shot in the dark saying it's on par with, uh, with WonderCon. Uh, but yeah, having been to both, I would argue that they're they're comparable in size, and um, well, Long Beach, on the other hand, Long Beach is a much smaller convention, much much smaller than uh, than WonderCon uh, or DragonCon. Uh, Long Beach Con, uh, Long Beach Comic Con is probably uh, it's probably on par with uh, Treklanta or or something of that nature. You know, maybe. Uh, Maybe one of the uh, the smaller Southeast conventions. Uh, I don't know. Uh, TJ would uh, would know for certain, having been to some of those smaller conventions on the East Coast. Uh, he'd be the one to ask, really. Of course, he's not been to Long Beach, so you know, it, there's no frame of reference there. So no common frame of reference anyway. But uh, but so it's it's convention weekend. It's convention weekend here for uh, for Long Beach and for Dragon Con. So. I thought it would be fun to, to talk about the conventions, talk about these two conventions, and, and any other conventions that you might have, um, that you might go to uh, in your neck of the woods. I know not everybody is in, in either Atlanta or, uh, or in, uh, in Southern California, and, 
but there's uh, there's of course the uh, Emerald City Comic Con. There's uh, there's the conventions in Texas. There's uh, there's the uh, stuff up north. Uh, you know, they're they're all kind of all over the place. So I want to know what your experience was with different cons are. What your experience is with. Uh, different conventions and, and what kind of stories you have and and also uh, because cosplay is a uh, is of course a big big deal a uh, big part of conventions now in the 21st century um, and uh, because I believe uh, the 29th uh, August 29th I believe is International Cosplay Day uh, so I'll, I want to know what your uh, what your favorite uh, what your favorite cosplay are uh, what are your uh, what are some of the more, more interesting cosplay that you've seen? Uh, I can think of right off the bat, uh, I can think of all the big, uh, the big, big mecha cosplay. They're very intricate mecha cosplay. They're uh, with a person inside, you know, kind of moving around. It's almost like a puppet at that point. Uh, but I've seen, uh, you know, I've seen the Transformers, the new and the old Transformers. I've seen Veritex. I've seen uh, uh, just big, big battle mech. Uh, cosplay; those are very interesting. My my, uh, my hats off to the to the creators of those costumes. Those, those, they really are. They really are more of a puppet uh, than a costume, even. Um, I guess more along the lines of how, how Big Bird is a uh, is a puppet and not really necessarily a costume. Um, but uh, but I, I do enjoy those. Um, those are some of my favorites that I've seen. Uh, there's one that I saw at uh, San Diego Comic-Con the year I was there. What, 2012, I think it was, that we were there? Uh, 2012 had the... Um, <laughs> it was like the most rock-basic, like, ghetto-dignified uh, Dalek costume ever. And it was like... The, like made out of plywood. I mean, you gotta hand it to the person for building this thing and carrying it to San Diego and and being inside the cost the, the costume too. Um, but the uh, this uh, this person uh, created this. And it was it was a uh, it was a plywood Dalek. You know, the whole thing was just a big plywood box uh, set on casters and. You know, had a hole cut out in the bottom so they could kind of scoot along. And um, the funny thing was, they had a uh, they had the, the little voice synthesizer deal uh, in in the, um, the little voice synthesizer deal in the costume there, so they were able to do the modulation, and talk like a Dalek, you know, kind of thing. But uh, that was that was a lot of fun. I've seen some really good Daleks uh, at several conventions. I've seen them at. Uh, at San Diego, I've seen them at, uh, at Dragon Con. I've seen them at uh, at uh, Long Beach uh, and uh, WonderCon in Anaheim. So I've, I've seen a few of these uh, Dalek costumes. Uh, really great stuff. Really great stuff. And uh, and uh, you know, of course, you know, I want to know what your uh, what your favorite cosplay are. I have a friend that does uh, very very intricate cosplay. Um, and one year he did, he was Speed Racer, and it was amazing. Um, you know, the, the clothes and everything, you know, this kind of normal stuff, you know, the, the uh, it was the, uh, the blue polo shirt, but he had everything custom made. Like he had the, the white trim on the blue polo shirt and the embroidered G. It was very screen accurate, very well done. He had the white pants. Uh, he actually bought the shoes, the driving moccasins. Um, he bought the driving moccasins to go with it. He actually bought a, a racing helmet. It was a real, no kidding, uh, uh, automobile racing, uh, like it was a Shoel helmet that he bought. It was like a $300 helmet. And yeah, it's amazing, Barbie. Some of the uh, the screen accuracy is just absolutely amazing. And this guy, you know, he's, he sunk a lot of money into this costume. Uh, you know, painted the helmet. It was, you know, he bought a white helmet. He painted the big M on it. Uh, you know, just an amazing, amazing uh, speed racer cosplay. And, and uh, you know, my ha 
hats off to him for, for being able to pull that off, being able to do that. And the guy's an old school, uh, he's an old school anime fan like me, so he's, you know, he's very into that, uh, that sort of uh, side of it. Uh, you know, the Speed Racer and the Robotech and, and the Voltron, and that, that very, you know, classic old school anime, Astro Boy, things like that. And I think he actually, um, I want to say he reused the costume for Anime Week in Atlanta as well, so, I mean, at least he got two conventions out of it. Um, speaking of which, I did a, um, when I, my first time I went to uh, AWA, it was AWA 7 in 2001, uh, back when it was down by the airport before they knocked down the hotel where they held the convention, uh, they knocked down the hotel so they could build another runway for the airport. Um, but I uh, went to AWA 7, and uh, I had a lot of stories about AWA 7, and uh, I will probably get into them there. Uh, but, yeah, so it was funny. I, uh, I went and I cosplayed as... Um, I forgot the character's name in Japanese, but in English in Sailor Moon, he was Melvin. Um, and I had the, you know, the black shirt with the black pants, and my hair was all like... Aww. And of course my glasses. And what I did was I made these uh, these uh, uh, like cardstock cutouts um, of uh, there were these cardstock cutouts of the the little spiral in his eyes because I wanted to do the contact lenses, but of course that was expensive. And I just I had moved out uh, the summer before, and then I then I. Then I left, to, you know, to go to college. So I moved out of the house, and then I left for college. So I was like really freaking broke. Uh, it was amazing that I was able to get back to. I don't even remember how I got back to Atlanta to go to AWA. Um, I think my grandparents picked me up. Uh, I think they picked me up from Athens and drove me and just dropped me off at the hotel and. Uh, God bless him for doing that. I think that's how I got there. I don't remember exactly. I don't recall exactly. But um, so yeah, that's how I um, that's how I got to AWA Seven. That was my first like cosplay that I ever did. Um, and I'll go ahead and tell you from experience: don't um, don't try to do something like that if you uh, if you value your eyesight, because I had a hell of a raging headache. From uh, from the eye strain of wearing those those little deals in my uh, in my glasses, because uh, I had to I had to uh, look through these these small holes and it messed up my depth perception. I I wore them for maybe like you know four or five hours and then I just finally took them out. I was like I can't do this, um, so I just wore glasses. I just wore my big thick glasses that I was wearing at the time, and uh, it got the point across. Um, uh, Barbie says her first uh, cosplay unofficially was Felicia from Street Fighter. Felicia, are you talking about Felicia from uh, Darkstalkers? Not Street Fighter, she's in Darkstalkers. Uh, different fighting game. Same, it was still Capcom. But so, but, uh, Felicia being in Street Fighter. And I'm, I'm gonna catch hell for being semantic about it. Yeah, oh, there she goes. Yeah, it was, it was uh, Darkstalkers. Uh, I know the like fanboys will like give me hell for you know uh, for being like yeah, yeah yeah you gotta you gotta make sure it's the right game but yeah, whatever dude whatever it's more about having fun and I, I'm I'm sorry I missed that I, I wish I uh, I wish I had seen uh, <laughs> you as fully is a little bit wonky um, simply because this is this is a weird like spot area for uh, connectivity with so a was seven is my my very first um, a was seven is my very first uh, convention experience 
uh, 18 years old, fresh moved out of the house, just started college. Um, I have no idea what a con... Oh, there we go. So, uh, um... traffic. Oh god, this sucks. Um, it was kind of cool, you know, I went to the expo hall and, you know, did a lot of stuff in the exhibition hall. I really didn't, um, I really didn't, uh, go to any panels, per se. Now, of course, AWA, this was back when AWA was still very new. Uh, well, like, very new. It was, it was AWA 7, so it wasn't huge yet like it it once it moved to the the Cobb Galleria Center it did that's when it blew up and then the, the MoMAcon started up and uh, Session Con started up I actually know the guy uh, the guys that started Session Con um, I, uh, I went to school with them went to college with them at Kennesaw State and uh, good dudes good dudes um, but uh, yeah they started uh, Session Con and uh, so that's a uh, that's my uh, that's my connection there, and I know a few people that, that run tech ops and things like that at, at Dragon Con, and, and uh, shout out to my people there. Uh, but yeah, so A was set, and uh, and I run across uh, this guy, and he looks kind of well. He doesn't look familiar. He sounds familiar though, and. Uh, like, where do I, you're Space Ghost! And it's George Lowe, uh, who, who voiced Space Ghost. And, uh, you know, of course, I'm an awkward teenager. I'm like, uh, you know, like, oh my gosh, I love Space Ghost! You know, so I'm, I'm just kind of hovering and watching and trying to figure out what exactly he's doing here. And he's like, he's all... He's kind of mad, like he's he's in this like like bad mood because he can't sell his autograph uh, because the convention doesn't allow people to sell their autographs. Uh, I don't know if that's changed or not, but back then uh, the celebrity guests were not allowed to sell autographs, or maybe it was like they you know you couldn't do it in the in the exhibition hall or something something weird like that. Like they weren't but he was all mad because he wasn't able to sell his autograph. So he's drawing these like terrible little like s pictures, like, you know, something a, a, a third grader, you know, a drunken third grader would, uh, would be able to, to do better than. But, you know, I mean, it's a step up from stick figures, so I'll give you that. And they were kind of funny, you know, kind of weird, absurdist kind of things. Um, so it worked, and so he was selling those, and then he would sign them, you know, so that's how he got around the whole thing. So he was, he was already salty about not being able to just sell his autograph on things. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and so I kind of, you know, I was kind of talking, you know, trying to talk to him, trying to say, you know, hey, you know, I, I really enjoy your work, and blah, 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 and he just was not having any of it. And, uh, you know, he's kind of this salty guy. He's like, I'm just here to sell these pictures and get money. And that was really off-putting for, like, you know, this is my first, like, con experience with a VIP or a celebrity, you know, kind of thing like that. And so that really, uh, it really kind of, like, made me kind of, uh, for a long time. And I, I, uh, I still have this, um... Uh, I still had this thing in, you know, in my mindset, you know, of having experienced this, you know, if for some reason somebody were to like recognize me and, and be like, oh, hey, you're an airborne surfer. And, you know, if somebody were, you know, A, that would be weird. Uh, <laughs> let's just, let's just say that right off the bat. That would be weird. Um, but if somebody were to actually recognize me somewhere and, and they were, I, of course it would be cool. It would be weird, but it would be cool. And um, uh, that would be something I would I was not used to. I would not be used to. But, uh, you know, if they, if they wanted to, you know, a picture, you know, a selfie or whatever, you know, I, I'm more than, more than happy to be great, very gracious. That's sort of my philosophy about it. It's like, 
you know, you're, you got to where you are, yeah, by hard work and perseverance and doing it yourself and pulling yourself up by the bootstraps, but you're also there, you know, because people, because of the people that like your work. So you have to be, you know, that's part of giving back. That's, that's sort of this thing about giving back to the community that built you. Um, so I'm, I'm all about, uh, I'm all about being part of that. And Barbie will attest to this. The Barbie will attest to this, uh, this story. Uh, side, side little adjunct story where uh, we were at California Adventure Park, Disney California Adventure Park, across from Disneyland. Uh, we were there uh, just hanging out and uh, during the Electronica stuff. This is right after, this is after Tron came out and they were having a big Tron themed party at DCA every night. It was, it was great, a lot of fun. They had a, uh, one of the, uh, I don't know what what they call it. I guess they call it like an accessory building or you know auxiliary building or whatever they had uh, over at the corner of, of the park. Um, they had it uh, as a mock-up of Flynn's Arcade from the movie, and they had all the video games in there. And of course, everything. There was nothing that was in that arcade that was newer than like 1982. And it was brilliant. I loved it. Um, and. Uh, hanging out around there I actually like I look over I see this guy I'm like I recognize you from, holy crap I know for you from YouTube and it was uh, it was Rocco Bodie from uh, from Mega 64 and I was like are, are, you, are you Rocco and he's like yeah I'm like oh holy crap and he, I think he was as surprised as I was that like somebody recognized him uh, but he was really cool he was there with his buddies and I'm like I don't want to bother you but I love your I love this I love this shit you do and uh He's really cool, and we we talked for a minute, and it took a took a quick photo. I've got that on. Uh, it's in the gallery on my website at airbornesurfer.com. You can go airbornesurfer.com, click the gallery link, and it's somewhere in there. You'll find it if you if you stalk my photos enough. Um, but uh, so yeah, so that's my little my little uh, graciousness story. So. Um, so back to uh, George Lowe and AWA, and um, I was there, and uh, I was like, like, eh, all right, whatever. So I'm just kind of hanging out at the hotel, and uh, went outside the expo hall, and there was just people kind of milling around. There's this big group of people just, you know, standing around laughing and, you know, carrying on, having a good time, and... and uh, there's this one dude in there who was doing the absolutely best impersonation of, uh, the absolutely best impersonation of Zorak I had ever heard. And I do a pretty good Zorak. I do a pretty good Zorak, uh, or at least I used to. Um, I haven't done it in a long time, but, uh, but this guy was, I mean, pitch perfect. And, and then he started doing Moltar's voice, and it was just spot on, and I'm like, holy crap! This guy's hilarious, and he's telling jokes, and he's having a good time, and people are asking me questions. I'm like, this guy, is this guy for real? And I walk up to him, and I just kind of like, kind of walk into the group and just kind of get a feel for what's going on. And it's Marty Coker, Croker, Croker, Marty Croker, and uh, Crocker. I forgot how he pronounced his name. Anyway, it's Marty Crocker, and uh, who was he was. Uh, one of the guys that started, um, he was one of the guys that really uh, was sort of that founding uh, brain trust, if you will, of uh, it was, uh, Andy, what's his dang name, and Marty Croker, and there was another guy, and they're the guys that got the idea to do Space Ghost. Not the old Space Ghost, but to take the old Space Ghost cartoons and chop them up and put them uh, into the new uh, scenarios, and they made Cartoon Planet, and they came up with the idea and created Cartoon Planet, and uh, did the new characterizations for for Space Ghost and Brack and Zorak, and they they came up with all that stuff. They created that show, and it was like like eight people that worked on that show, <laughs> you know, and he's one of them. And then of course they. Uh, they started Ghost Planet Enterprises, and uh, that led to um, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, which is still one of my favorite shows. And 
and you know if you're not familiar with Space Ghost to Ghost to Ghost, I'm, I'm absolutely sorry for you, but you need to go and watch it. Like seriously, just uh, after this broadcast, go and watch some episodes. Find them somewhere. I don't know where to find them, but find some episodes of Space Ghost to Ghost to Ghost and uh, Cartoon Planet too, and, and they're all freaking hilarious. And if it were not for those guys, Adult Swim, uh, if you're an Adult Swim fan, Adult Swim would not exist without these guys because they're the ones that came up with this idea. They're the ones that came up with all the stuff. Um, uh, John C. Riley would not, nobody would know who he is. Uh, he would just be another like nobody actor that just had a bit part in Days of Thunder and that's it. Um, you know, John C. Riley would not be, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe he would have come about, but he would have come about later after he's already hooked up with uh, Will Ferrell. Um, or he might not have had a chance to hook up with Will Ferrell. I don't know, but if it weren't for him, or if it weren't for these guys, you would not have any of this kind of stuff. You wouldn't have Tim and Eric, you, which I'm not a big fan of Tim and Eric, but whatever. Um, you wouldn't have had any of that. You wouldn't have had um, Wonder Shows in. You wouldn't have had any of these like new school absurdist uh, TV shows. Uh, the short format TV shows that you had um, in the mid-2000s. Uh, coming along in the mid-2000s. So, uh, so Marty Croker very influential guy but also very cool like just just a super cool down to earth just likes to get drunk and smoke pot kind of guy um i don't know if that's for certain and i i don't want to like spread rumors about the guy because he did unfortunately pass away uh, last year or year before i don't remember uh, so i'm not going to like try and sully his memory uh he probably wouldn't care one way or the other what i'm saying but, um, but yeah, you know, I try to be, I, I try to be, uh, cognizant of some things like that. And speaking of, uh, speaking of great convention personalities that have, uh, departed this mortal coil, uh, I do want to give a shout out to my buddy, uh, Eric, and, uh, he was famous, uh, in the, uh, in the convention sphere, uh, very famous here in Southern California. Well, famous, popular, known kind of guy here in Southern California and the West Coast. Um, super, super great guy. Uh, did a lot of charity work. Uh, did a lot of uh, a lot of outreach, kind of stuff like that. Uh, he was uh, probably best known as Jedi Elvis. He was this guy, a great singer, uh, super great singer. Uh, but he's just sort of, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, a rotund, uh, old school looking uh, Filipino guy. And uh, he, his shtick was he dressed up uh, like uh, Vegas Elvis, like 70s Elvis, like old Elvis. And, uh, looked the part, you know, he, he's, you know, he's a big guy, uh, big guy, had the mutton chops, he only did, yeah, you know, he looked like, he looked like a, a Filipino Elvis impersonator, it was great, and it was a hilarious shtick that he did, uh, but his Elvis getup, his Elvis costume was, it had all these different little, like, Star Wars sort of, uh, sort of touches to it, you know, yeah, and, uh, you know the sequins on the on the scarf. You had the sequin scarf, and the sequins had the the Rebel Alliance uh, logo uh, at the at the ends. And, and, uh, he he had a custom microphone that he used, and it was a lightsaber, uh, or it was a lightsaber hilt. And uh, so uh, I mean, just all out, just brilliant, brilliant character, uh, just a ni the nicest freaking guy you'd ever meet, just a super guy, uh, super uh, generous, super uh, outgoing, well, not, not outgoing enough, um, just a great, great soul, and uh, he unfortunately also uh, passed away very suddenly a couple of weeks ago, and I'm 
sure everybody's missing him at the convention because uh, he was very much a, um, a, a, a fixture at the Southern California conventions. Um, not only was he a Jedi Elvis, but he also uh, was a, I mean, pitch perfect, screen, screen accurate, uh, well, screen accurate, um, you know, uh, page accurate, I guess you could say, panel accurate version of the Penguin from Batman. Uh, the tux and the top hat and he had the, the prosthetic nose and he, he did the voice and he had the, the cigarette. Uh, just, I mean, just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant uh, rendition of the, uh, of the Penguin there. And those, those two are the ones that, uh, that pop out in my mind when I think of him. And uh, that's how I like to remember him and just, just a great guy and want to keep his family and his friends, his closer friends, thoughts this convention weekend uh, because I know we're missing him. I know they're missing him and uh, he's a good dude and uh, he will be missed. He is, he's very certain to miss. Uh, he even had some friends um, had some friends up in Hollywood. They, they, they did a very very moving tribute to him. They actually took one of the blank stars on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood uh, which, of course, there's, if you didn't know, the, the, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, there's a lot of blank stars there. Like, they haven't been, you know, uh, dedicated or whatnot. And so they, they went to, like, Home Depot and bought the little, le the little letter labels, like you put on a mailbox, and they put his name on there, and they put a little picture of him as the Penguin. And uh, just, a, just a great, great little tribute to, uh, to a super guy. So I don't want to get on this like all the convention people I know are dying. No, I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to get on a somber note. Um, but uh, yeah, so those are some of my, my my convention memories. I want to know what your your convention experiences have been like. Uh, what are some interesting stories that have popped out in your head? Um, I have another one of. Um, I have another good uh, good convention story. I think everybody in Atlanta, or maybe even everybody who's ever been to a convention, pro you know, probably has this story. Of um, so, I was in an elevator in Atlanta at Dragon Con at Peachtree Plaza, um, going down to go get supper or something, and uh, I'm in this elevator, and uh, this older uh, older Japanese gentleman walks into the uh, into the elevator on one of the floors. I look over like and this is still like I'm kind of you know awkwardly forward, you know, I'm, I'm sort of getting my my outgoingness, you know, built up and so I look over I'm like pardon me, but aren't you George Takai? <laughs> and he looks over and Well, actually it's pronounced Takei, as in Tugei or Gabriole. But in Japanese, Takei means fabulous, so you've just called me George Fabulous, and I'm okay with that. Now, of course, I'm, I'm pacing, I'm giving him like Shatner's pacing, but whatever. Uh, but, but, you know, it's just like those, that's, that's the story. And I'm sure he gives that line to everybody who mispronounces his name. But, I mean, that's how I learned how, that's how I learned how to pronounce George Takei's name. Uh, was because he told me it's Takei and rhymes with too gay. Uh, so, so there's my funny little story about meeting uh, George Takei uh, in an elevator at Dragon Con in Atlanta. So that's uh, that's the story I'm gonna have to leave it with. Um, this has uh, this has been been kind of fun. It's it's unexpectedly uh, unexpectedly had enough to talk about today, uh, despite there not being a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of uh, uh, chatter in the comments today. I will see you guys on the replay. I, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching. Uh, as always, as always, I uh, would not do it here. I would not be doing this if it weren't for you guys. Uh, and your uh, your feedback and your support. Thank you so much. If uh, if you're new here, 
uh, please consider subscribing. I would appreciate that. Uh, just click the little uh, the little button down there below. And uh, don't forget to hit the bell notification icon uh, so that you'll know when the next Freeway Forum uh, is starting up. Uh, we are live here on Thursdays on YouTube at 5 p.m. Pacific until whenever I happen to finish. Um, you can always follow me on Twitter as well, at Airborne Surfer. And, of course, everything is also available at AirborneSurfer.com. My name is Atari. This has been the Freeway Forum. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And until next time, tally-ho, y'all.